We don't usually come to the studio to introduce a story, but this is different because this is where the story happened. And for a lot of us at the Nine Network, it was personal. For me, it was the first person I ever really knew and admired who ended up on a U.S. postage stamp. And we'll have the full story of the dedication of the Gwen Eiffel Black Heritage Stamp later in the program. But it does help us set the scene for some of our other stories. And we're going to start at this year's Academy Awards. And St. Louis was well represented. The local black-owned animation company Lion Forge worked on the Oscar-winning animated short Hair Love. The film St. Louis Superman about activist Bruce Franks was nominated in the short subject documentary category. And the film Harriet got nominations for Best Actress and Best Song. The St. Louis Connection, well, the film about Harriet Tubman was directed by a woman who spent the first eight years of her life growing up in St. Louis. And she was back in town last year, sat down with Ruth Ezell before all the Oscar buzz began. There's not much time. You got to be miles away from here for dawn. Where is she? The 2019 film Harriet, about the escaped slave turned abolitionist Harriet Tubman, is the sixth movie directed by St. Louis native Casey Lemons. We spoke to Lemons five months prior to Harriet's release and asked why it's taken Hollywood so long to greenlight a project about such a major figure in African American history. There, there were a lot of projects that were circulating um, that had beautiful talent attached and, you know, seemed like really good packages. And um, for whatever reason that things fall apart all the time in show business, things fall apart all the time in show business. And so, um, or they get postponed, you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually very excited about, about having gotten it this far, you know. Harriet Tubman was born Araminta Ross around 1822 in Dorchester County, Maryland. Her parents were enslaved, and Minty, as she was called, endured being beaten and whipped as a child by various masters. Tubman eventually took her mother's name, Harriet, escaped to Philadelphia in 1849, then promptly returned to Maryland to rescue her relatives. Do you know what would happen if you got caught? They would torture you until you pointed them right to this office. You got lucky, Harriet. And there's nothing more you can do. Don't you tell me what I can't do. Over time, Tubman made more than a dozen missions. And with help from the Underground Railroad, she guided about 70 enslaved people to freedom. Those missions, in and of themselves, were certainly enough to secure Harriet Tubman's place in history. But that's just the beginning of her accomplishments. During the Civil War, Tubman worked for the Union Army, first as a nurse, then as an Army scout and a spy. She became the first American woman to lead troops into battle in an operation that liberated more than 700 slaves from plantations along the Maryland coast. After the Civil War, Tubman settled into her home on land she bought in Auburn, New York, where she cared for her parents. She campaigned for women's suffrage, established a home for elderly African Americans, and set up an infirmary where anyone, regardless of race, could get health care for free. All very impressive for a woman who could neither read nor write. How do you do? The film director who told Tubman's story for the big screen has about a 30-year track record in show business. But it was studying history that consumed Casey Lemons in college. I was always interested in it. I'm still very interested in it. And it's funny because now I see how it's entered my um, career, you know what I mean? But I was always on that path, so I was always interested in history. And um, I've always been interested in African American history. Lemon's comments came during a visit here for the world premiere of her first opera. She wrote the libretto for Fire Shut Up in My Bones, the adaptation of the 2014 memoir by New York Times columnist Charles M. Blow was produced by Opera Theater of St. Louis in June of 2019. Charles's memoir is very lyrical and evocative and poetic, you know, so it had that going for it because of course, that's what you want, uh, you know, in writing, in writing um, opera and in writing dialogue. I mean, it was, the dialogue was beautiful. You know, he really, 
he really brought you to this place and time and who these people were, you know. So that was wonderful. So I took a lot from the book, even the words, you know, even the words, how he described things and how people talked and brought that to the Loretto. I'm gonna be free or die. There were fewer opportunities in the film industry for African Americans when Casey Lemons was starting out. So we asked if she feels encouraged by the increase in diversity and more diverse storytelling. I feel encouraged, but at the same time, <laughs> the numbers are so uh, depressing, you know what I mean? So I feel encouraged, I teach, so that keeps me encouraged because I see all these people coming up, these wonderful filmmakers, you know, and such diverse voices. But the fact that we still have to have panel discussions about inclusion, you know, it's a little bit staggering, but I do have hopes that eventually we won't have to have those discussions. Stay tuned.